Thank you for joining us. My name is Jorge Acosta. I'm on the board of Hispanic Chamber of Commerce of Tampa Bay. Uh, you could reach us at 813-867-3550 or on our website at www.tampahispanicchamber.com. Uh, and this evening, we have a special guest, something that the Chamber is very important topic to discuss and one that we definitely want to concentrate for 2024, and that's learning and development. And with us, we have Deneen Atard, and she's part of the Atard Leadership Academy, LLC. Deneen, thank you for Hello. joining us. Hello. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here because when you get me started talking about leadership, I can go on. It's my favorite topic. <laughs> And, and, I, and I mentioned that in, in the intro, that's because it's, it's an, an, an important topic for the chamber and it's something that we discussed as far as wanting to make sure that we are able to provide leadership and training and development to our members. So I think having you on our podcast this evening, I think it's an important factor and a lot of topics that we're going to talk about, I think our members will find beneficial. So thank you for joining us uh, Quite today. Quite welcome. Thank you. And, and just to get started real quick, I, I know I've seen you around in several of our events and things like that, but when did you actually join the chamber and why did you join the chamber? And since you've joined, how have you found the chamber? To be? Joining uh, the chamber has been a great opportunity for me as far as networking and engaging with authentic people, which is something I'm really big about. Uh, Geo had introduced me to the chamber okay. a while back. I think it's maybe several months ago. And probably six months ago, she started to just hinting at it. You know, the Cha Hispanic Chamber of Commerce would be a nice place for you to be. You should really come. And she had invited me to several groups, uh, but it just didn't fit. And so I finally said, you know what? I'm going to go. And I went to the panel discussion. That was the first meeting that I went to mm -hmm. and walked in and I felt at home. I mean, okay. people were very engaging, um, very authentic. And you'll hear me use those words because to me that that's very important to me. It also helps to make me feel at home. Right. And when people welcome you into there, I felt like I was being welcomed into someone's home, not necessarily Great. a That's business. Awesome. Yes, there were business professionals, mm -hmm. but I felt like they were welcoming into their home. You and felt like family. I did feel <laughs> like family. And being a member uh, has given me a lot of opportunities uh, to meet people that I wouldn't necessarily have met. And Great. that's exciting. And I would say anyone that is thinking about the Hispanic Chamber, maybe I'm going to be transparent. Maybe they were like me. And I thought, I'm not Hispanic. I don't speak Spanish. Am I going to be accepted? Is it the place that I need to be? If you're thinking that, I would tell them, make it happen. Visit. You won't regret it. Great. We're, we're definitely all inclusive. <laughs> yes, you are. And, and we welcome all members to join. Um, but let's take a step back. And can you give us a little bit about what, what your company does as far as what Atard Academy Learning, uh, sorry, Atard Leadership Academy, what do they do? What do you, what do you concentrate on? Atar Leadership Academy specializes in workforce development and leadership development. And the reason why we hone in on workforce development is because right now we're in a, a place where we have the largest population of entry level employees that are working in the workforce. And they don't necessarily have a strategic plan on how to get from entry level to their first lead role or first right. management or first leadership role. And I believe that you are the most powerful when you take your learning and development into your own hands, mm -hmm. not necessarily waiting for your employer to have a plan for you, but you having one as a part of your strategic growth. And that's what a TART Leadership Academy helps individuals do. We talk to them about soft skills because I truly think that developing and honing your soft skills right. can catapult you to places that you've never been before, put you in front of people that you never thought about talking to. Because once you learn how to monitor and navigate your own behavior and read other people's behavior and be able to communicate effectively, then people want to sit down and have a conversation with you. And if you're leading a team, then team members want to follow you because they right. feel like you're authentic. You're someone that they can trust. You have their back. But if you don't know how to articulate that and to be able to deliver that, mm -hmm. then you're going to struggle. If you go to the flip side of that, when we're talking about entrepreneurs, which is a reason why... I value the chamber is being an entrepreneur myself. My background was always in leadership and training and development. I worked in academics uh, as okay. academic dean, and then I worked in sales for uh, a large um, telecommunications company. But training and development was always a part of what I did. Not everyone that is an entrepreneur has that type of background, but I still see the value in that. And so when we're talking to entrepreneurs, they're transitioning some of them from being independent producers where they're not responsible for a team to now they've decided I am going to launch out on my own right. and I am going to build my own team. 
they may not have those skills. They may not, they may know the business that they're starting mm-hmm. because we're always experts at what we do. That's the reason why we do what we do, but they may not have those leadership skills. That's also where Tart Leadership Academy comes in. We can either do group coaching. We can either do one-on-one. We can do strategy sessions where you might decide, you know what, for the next 90 days, Deneen, I want to focus and hone in on my communication skills. And so we develop a strategy on how you're going to develop those. And we develop a partnership because as a coach, when I'm coaching you on you're changing your behavior, it's not the time where you sit down as a client and says, I'm going to lay lay back and Danine is going to handle everything. Mm -hmm. No, we're working together. We're strategizing because I'm smart enough to know that if I don't get your buy-in in the beginning, you're not going to carry through with whatever goals. Right. Right. That is Mm -hmm. so true. So these are the types of things that we help independent uh, individuals as well as uh, leaders and entrepreneurs develop. Great, great hearing that. And, and I think uh, you, 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 you and I were, were speaking briefly earlier before we, we started the podcast, and I think you had mentioned something regarding uh, a special for the chamber members. Um, can you go into a little bit about that? I certainly can. And this is only for the chamber members. Uh, Of course, the pricing is directly uh, related to being a chamber member because it's important for me to be able to support my fellow entrepreneurs. And I feel that this is the way that I can do it. And also with my time and my energy and what they're actually going to get is 12 months worth of one on one coaching. You meet with me for one on one and we do some strategizing. We set your goals of what you want to accomplish for those first three months and we work through that. And then you also are going to get access to uh, a monthly training. It will be a pre recorded training and some uh, resources that will also be available for you to work through that. And then there'll be other uh, bonuses that I'll put in and messages and inspiration as well as some training and some strategic uh, information to help you. That normally uh, is definitely, it can start anywhere from $2,500 a month. But for chamber members, I'm doing a $449 a month if they decide that they want to say, I want to commit to this for one year. Because we all know that you can start with the good intentions. Mm -hmm. Everyone has those New Year's resolutions. But sometimes we need the encouragement of someone that's going to not necessarily hold our hand, but to guide us and to also hold us accountable. And then when we look back on those 90 days, you can say, oh, I can check that off my list. I accomplished that. I accomplished that. And by the end of the year, you've grown so much in your uh, insight into not only your business, because once you learn how to communicate effectively, do your time management Mm -hmm. and your emotional intelligence grows, you're going to see a return on the uh, investment that you are putting in. You're going to see a return, I truly believe, in how much revenue you're generating because you're going to be comfortable your sales associates, if you have a team, they're going to be comfortable communicating with you, which in turn, they'll be very comfortable communicating with your customers. Correct. And, and, and I think you mentioned as far as the accountability, but not only that, just having somebody that you could also talk to about it, like just having that other person. Uh, sometimes, you know, you know, if you feel alone or you feel like, oh, I, you know, you, you just give up or something like that. But having that other person, hey, don't give up or, hey, you know, I'm here with you. I think that that definitely helps and it goes a long way. So that's good to know. And, and more importantly, uh, that it's a special pricing for our members and it's a benefit uh, for the members of the chamber. So thank you. Thank you for that. As far as the, the leadership, have you seen a, a big change as far as, you know, obviously we had COVID the last few years, but have you seen a big shift from, you know, pre-COVID to now after, you know, 2023, now we're in 2024. What's, what is that looking like as far as leadership and development and training? When we think about COVID and the way it changed our mindset, the way we view things and the way we interact with people, it really shifted the dynamics because we both know that with COVID came a lot of fear. It, people were worried about, you know, job safety and they were worried about a lot of different things that fed over into um, them maybe pulling back on leadership development because right. they, we were so focused on just surviving right. day to day. And then so one of the things I did notice is being so much behind the camera for Zooms mm-hmm. that not having that personal interaction, some of those skills became dusty. Right. Because there's a difference between interacting with someone, a coworker that's sitting across your desk or being on a, Zo- a Zoom call. Absolutely. And you need those skills to be able to read that body language, to be able to understand and to negotiate uh, your point of view where you can do that better if you are in person. So the one biggest thing I would say I saw is that people had to shift back into that uh, mindset of being in person. Mm -hmm. And then also removing any of the barriers that they had, because we all know that if you're talking to a camera, sometimes it's you don't feel as though you're really connecting with a person. Correct. And so, of course, through COVID, we learned how to 
to connect with people. But when you come back into the office, then you've got the office dynamics mm -hmm. because now I'm used to working in a silo. I didn't have to give an account to anyone. Well, right. you have to give an account, but <laughs> I didn't have to socialize with someone. I didn't have to stand at the water cooler. Or if I didn't like what someone was saying, I was uh, my camera was off so no right. one saw me. And so those are the things that people have to then learn how to re-engage. So that would be one of the things. Another thing I think that is emerging uh, after the pandemic is, number one, our attention spans. Well, maybe not everyone's attention span, but my <laughs> attention span is rather short. Right. So when it comes to learning and development, we think about that. Generally, they're eight hour courses, they're four hour courses. And statistically, the abandonment rate is 85 percent when a person signs mm -hmm. up for an online course or in in-person course is a little bit different because if you sign up to go, you go right. and participate. But if you're doing online learning, people's attention spans are shorter, mm -hmm. which is something else that Atari Leadership Academy took into con uh, to consideration. Okay. We wanted to do micro learning because we found that people, if you give them small bouts of information, small mm -hmm. uh, pockets of information over a period of time, build on that learning process, mm -hmm. they're more likely to use it. And then one of the things that I uh, was a, a motivating factor was Jack Welch said that if you take the uh, initiative to be curious mm -hmm. and when you're talking to people, people are more apt to learn. So when we're presenting that information, we present it in a format that I'm not telling you these are the five things you have to do to be a mm -hmm. successful leader. I'm sharing information with you and we're engaging in a conversation. That's the way all of our learning is. Right. And so that individual is they're picking up the strategies and most importantly, they're picking up one tip that they can go to work tomorrow and implement. You come back and you listen to another episode or another lesson. You say, oh, wait a minute. This is how I can interact with Susie because Susie has this personality and this is how I respond when she says mm -hmm. something. So we're giving them bite-sized information that they can use. Now, of course, we can strategize and come up with an entire plan that's four hours or eight hours or a week that we deliver over time. But we found the successful rate, especially when you're talking about entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. they're juggling 15 minutes. 15 million hats at one time. Correct. Many of them are still holding down a full-time job. They're trying to do the entrepreneur route at the same time as they transition full-time. So we understand that. So we found that the micro lessons work extremely well to help leaders because everyone wants to be better. Everyone wants to grow and to develop. We're taking away that barrier that keeps people from saying, I don't have time. Mm -hmm. Well, what if I told you you could do it in 10 minutes? Then it looks a little bit more yeah. achievable. Yep. Just over time, right? 10 yes, minutes, over 10 time. There. Right, right. Correct. Yeah. Yep. No excuses. No excuses. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know you mentioned it, you know, briefly as far as, but but just maybe reiterate, uh, you know, the importance of that, because I know, at least personally myself, for, for the, you know, I'm on a hybrid schedule, right, at corporate, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, we have Zoom calls and you have all these calls, all these meetings, but they're all, you know, not very personable. Like you said, through a camera, through through Zoom. Sometimes some folks have the camera off, so you're not even seeing the faces. It's just the voice. Um, but how important is that ability to learn how to speak, how to communicate, how to how to really you know engage that audience, whether you're doing it via the, a camera or Zoom or actually in person? The easiest way to engage with someone is to take the shift and the focus off of you to them. Start to asking questions. We all know it's human nature. When people ask you about something, find out what's important to that person, what makes them light up when you start mm -hmm. that conversation. Then when you take it from that approach of the curiosity state and you're asking questions, you're developing a relationship with that person, a right. relationship that is going to uh, serve you well in the future. Because we all know you do business with people you know, and especially people you trust. How do you get to the trust level? You start with building that relationship. And building relationships starts with becoming self-aware, which is very important. And a lot of people wonder why they, I won't say fail, but why they struggle in developing those solid relationships, right. whether it be personally or professionally. And the first thing this to do is to look inward. Mm -hmm. What are the dynamics of your personality that is causing you to hinder? And I feel that that so strongly is that a friend of mine and I and a colleague, we co-authored a book and it's strictly around self-awareness. It's illuminating leadership a journey to building better relationships. Okay. And basically what it does is we've broken down the 12 areas of leadership, whether they be communication, time building, mindset. We talk about growth mindset, fixed mindset, and all of the other areas that surround leadership. And for 30 days, you're focusing and doing self-reflection questions on that specific area, because the more you know about who you are, then if I know that every time you come into a meeting, 
something triggers me. Mm -hmm. It's really not about what you said, because I can't control what comes out of your mouth, but right. I can control how I respond. Your reaction. And that's correct. Mm -hmm. And that's a part of being an effective leader. Because people take their cues by the way we treat ourselves. People mm -hmm. say, oh, it doesn't really matter. Oh, yeah, people are looking at the boundaries you set, the way you communicate, and your uh, ability to take corrective criticism. And we'll, we'll call it feedback because people don't <laughs> like it. We'll call it feedback. And so they will look at it that way. And every time you're interacting with a person, it's a chance to grow and to develop. So as you're learning more about who you are mm -hmm. and what makes you tick, and how you respond to your coworkers, you're better able to then use your emotional intelligence right. to interact with those people, forge that relationship. And then I'm gonna add another thing. If the only time that I'm calling you is when I want something, that's gonna go stale really mm -hmm. quick. It's about networking. People always think it's one way, it's two way. Correct. I need to be able to call you up and say, hey, I was just, you know, you crossed my mind today. Mm -hmm. How are things going at work? You know. What's new in your world? How can I collaborate with you? How can I support you? Right. What can I do to help you? Not this is what I need every time I call. So when an opportunity crosses your desk, you, you say, oh, wait a minute. Denise, is, she's been there for me. Mm -hmm. We've had some conversations. I know a client that could benefit from the leadership skills that she teaches. Right. You're more apt to make that phone call to me. All of this rolls back to self-awareness and developing your emotional intelligence and your soft skills. And you, you're building that relationship. Yes, with you that are. Individual. Now, now for, for the some of the members that are that are listening to us and, and they look at, you know, the, the, the words, right, leadership, development, trainings, and they, they're whether they have a, a one person business or they have a hundred person, you know, uh, business. But some of them might be like putting that to the back end or the back burner. Right? They might have some other priorities. They might have some other things that are that they're looking into. How important is leadership development training for the entrepreneur, whether you have one individual in your business or you have a hundred. First off, I'd say it's vital because the first person that you learn to lead is yourself. We often think, oh, it doesn't matter. I don't have a team. Well, if you can't manage your priorities, your goals and set measurable goals and then come back and hold yourself accountable, how are you going to then hold a team accountable? How are you going right. to be able to have those tough conversations? And as entrepreneurs, we are not establishing a business for it to stay stagnant at a space, at a, at a segment to where it is. So right. if you're one person and you're wearing many hats, we all understand that. But ideally, I'm quite sure that your goal would be to grow, to grow and to develop, right. to add some team members. And maybe it doesn't get up to maybe 25. That's still a significant team. So you want to be prepared. The time to prepare is not when you're onboarding mm -hmm. 15 associates. No, 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 no. The time to oh, prepare. Had so much, right? Yeah, correct. <laughs> when that's that's not tough enough. The mm -hmm. time to prepare is now. Right. When you you don't have the stress because you're going to be retaining that information. You're going to be able to then have dialogues with other leaders, and then they're going to put their input and give you some uh, insight into areas that you may not have thought about. And it prepares you to have those intellectual conversations with mm -hmm. other leaders and then your mindset is going to shift because then you go from oh i'm just a, a a one person entrepreneur to no i'm a leader and i'm engaging with other leaders and right. it changes the way you think about everything now you had also we also spoke earlier regarding some of the benefits of the, the chamber and for the, our members that might not be aware, there's a, we have a platform called Grow Zone. And I think that's a, you know, it goes a long way as far as what we have spoken to about, you know, that networking, you had joined in November, the networking, the socializing, uh, uh, meeting different people. But how important has that been as far as registering on the Grow Zone, getting your information out there on the website uh, so that other individuals, other companies can kind of go in and see, hey, look, uh, Deneen, she's got a, a, a leadership academy. Let me take a look at it. How important is that for the members? Of your it is very important. And it was so important to me. First off, when I have when I make the decision that I'm going to dedicate my time to something, it's very important to me. So if I'm going to dedicate the resources, I'm going to then commit myself to uh, being engaged. So as soon as Carmen sent me my link, once I joined, I logged in, created my uh, mm -hmm. profile and downloaded my, my photo, my logo, my about section. And then I started to looking and to seeing what other members were there that had uh, businesses that may not necessarily be the same businesses on, mm -hmm. but they had they serve the same customer the demographics. Right. And then I started thinking about ways that I could strategize. And as a matter of fact, uh, I was at, I think it was the, the last networking meeting that we had where a lot of the business owners were there and we mm -hmm. had tables set up. 
I actually met an individual and we're collaborating and we're going to talk next uh, week about how we can come together and serve her clients as well as my clients on a new endeavor. I wouldn't have had that opportunity had I not been a member of the chamber because I wouldn't have been at that meeting. The key thing is that we have to be willing to step out of our comfort zone Mm -hmm. and we have to be willing to risk someone saying no. But then again, you have to be willing to risk someone saying yes. So it's all about looking at it the right way. I look at it. I have nothing to lose. And you already made the commitment. You made the investment. I am going to maximize every inch of what the chamber has to offer. And one of the things that I did was I realized that you could actually uh, put some information into the newsletters that go out. And I wanted to be able to do that. I mean, that's if every entrepreneur knows that that's valuable uh, real estate and to be able to be approved to have that. Of course, I'm going to take advantage of it. And I definitely would encourage all the other members to do it. Great. Now, uh, I see that you brought a few uh, books with you, a couple of books here with you. Um, want to discuss, discuss what they are? I sure do. Women Who Lead is a book that is coming out in the next 30 days. And basically, it's women who lead navigating a path of influence and success. This is a proof copy. And... This book, I started when the pandemic first uh, hit. And of course, as life happens, it got a little bit delayed. And then we picked it back up and I interviewed a lot of leaders in different organizations. Mm -hmm. And I came back, I says, what are the things you wish someone had told you before you started your leadership position? And I wrote it from the perspective of we're two people sitting down having coffee and everyone else gets the benefit of listening in. So we talk about those things about how to lead and gain influence, Mm -hmm. how to navigate the waters of conflict, office politics, what it means to be uh, a woman of color in leadership roles, because we all know that as women of color, they face challenges differently Mm -hmm. and different challenges than our counterparts. So being able to have that transparent conversation about those types of topics and so much more is the basis for women who lead, because I wanted women to be able to have something because I'm always sensitive of time. Right. They don't have time to read a 500 page book or, you know, watch a four hour video. It's broken down to small bite sized chapters that are no more than three pages long. And then after you finish that, I believe in applying what you learn. So the next thing is a journal question. How can I use what I've just learned? And it's specific about what you just learned. And then you reflect on it and you build on and you go to the next one. So this one is, I'm excited, it'll be coming out in uh, end of January, 1st of February. Great. And the other one, this is Illuminating Leadership. This one is already out and it is available. And I co-authored that uh, with another individual. And this one is specifically uh, designated for a reflective journal and workbook for, it can be male or female, it, it unlike the women who lead that was the target audience for that. This is for all leaders. And we sit down and we go through the 12 leadership topics Okay. and you can work and develop. And this is also strategic because you can develop your own leadership plan. Excellent. And it gives you everything that you need to do that self-awareness and self-reflection. Okay, great. Now I know we're running on time, but I want to give you some, <laughs> some last uh, moments here to, to, to speak um, for, for the members here that have a corporation or, or a business uh, or they're their own entrepreneur, again, regardless whether they have one or 20, uh, employees, but let's say they have their own uh, leadership development program um, in place, whether it's fully developed or not, but let's say they have their own uh, program in place. What benefit would they have in hiring uh, a TAR Leadership Academy um, to run that leadership for them? Well, actually, a lot of corporations do have um, their own le- learning and development uh, department. However, they also benefit from bringing someone in to do consulting because we also know that you could sometimes work in a silo and you can uh, become stagnant in how you're presenting the information or be able to have a fresh view of the information. Well, when you hire a consultant that comes in and works with you, they're seeing things from a different perspective. They're more curious about, okay, why do you do X? And then what has been your outcome for that? So that's a different way. Then we have some uh, corporations that we might think that they do, but you'd be surprised at how many uh, small corporations Mm -hmm. that they don't have it because they don't have the bandwidth to support a uh, department full time, or they may have one person, but that other person does four other things in that organization. Right. So we all know what happens. Priority. It gets pushed right. back. So being able to have someone that can come in on a um, contract, Tart Leadership Academy can come in, we can help develop. If you have a need area, you says, we want to focus on X. We develop a program for that. That can be an on-demand e-program 
which is very beneficial because then they can come back to it over time. Or we come in and do a lunch and learn or a full workshop that may last eight hours over the course of two days. Okay, excellent. Um, I, I know we're running out of time, <laughs> but you know, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, for being here this evening. Um, again, if you could just give your, your contact information, uh, Deneen Attard from Attard Leadership Academy. Uh, how, do, how does somebody get in contact, if one of our members wants to get in contact with you, other than the website, uh, on our website, but how would they get in contact with you? You can send me an email at Deneen Attard at DeneenAttard.com. Of course, you can also reach me on LinkedIn. Simply tap, type in my name, Deneen Attard. Or you can also type in my uh, business name, which is Tart Leadership Academy. Either of those will lead you to me. And of course, you can always reach me on any of my social media platforms. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, again, from the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, Tampa Bay. Uh, again, our website is www.tampahispanicchamber.com uh, uh, or our phone number 813-867-3550. Thank you.